Uh, hello and welcome to Century College Digital Fabrication Laboratory. The Digital Fab Lab is a collection of off-the-shelf machines and off-the-shelf software which uh, enables you to do digital manufacturing in, a, in our today's contemporary society. Um, our Fab Lab is a, uh, we're, we're part of the um, Center for Bits and Atoms uh, at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology at MIT. And so uh, there's a lot of Fab Labs distributed around the globe. Uh, there's probably about 40 to 45 Fab Labs today. Globally, there's about six to ten Fab Labs in the United States, and we're growing uh, Fab Labs all the time, and all of the Fab Labs are associated with the Center for Bits and Atoms at MIT. Uh, come on inside, and I'll give you a tour of some of our equipment and machinery in the Fab Lab and explain a little bit about how they work. When you, when you enter the Fab Lab, um, all the Fab Labs around the, the, the network, when I, when I would talk about the network, it's really a global network, uh, but all the Fab Labs essentially have the exact same uh, uh, piece of equipment, uh, machinery, tooling, um, and a lot of the same kinds of software. And the reason that we do that is to sponsor or provide a community for sharing and collaboration and uh, kind of this cross-cultural manufacturing environment. We do have a few uh, additional pieces of equipment uh, or pieces of machinery in the Century College Fab Lab that aren't necessarily in all of them, but we have a a core set of machines, and that's what I'm going to talk about uh, first and foremost here. So one of the areas I'd like to start with is what we call our uh, machining center or, or our digital um, um, uh, cam system. This is a, a uh, Roland Modella mill, and it's a, a desktop CNC machine. Uh, it's driven with um, some open source software. Uh, MIT has written some of this software. And this machine enables us, one of the things that we do in this machine is to do printed circuit uh, boards or our own printed circuit cards. So rather than, than buying something or even perhaps uh, buying something in a breadboard environment, we can actually design our own printed circuit boards. Um, students engineer them. Uh, we then take surface mount components and we can manufacture and build different uh, components. This, uh, this uh, piece of gear right here is essentially a thin client computer. Uh, it's one of the projects that we're working on in the MIT uh, Fab Lab global environment. Um, it's actually gone through several iterations right now. We can also use this machine to do some uh, prototyping. We can use it to um, do 3D modeling. We can build molds and things like that that we can then produce other types of parts. Um, over here we have a scanner. We're using a digital scanner, which is uh, one of the newer items that we've uh, introduced to the Fab Lab. Here you can see that we've got a scooter set up. This is the actual scanning device, and we input it into a machine. So we can take a, an already pre-existing part, and to a degree we can reverse engineer that. Uh, so this is actually proving to be a pretty uh, invaluable tool. And moving around the Fab Lab, one of the most important components of any Digital Fab Lab is the ability to communicate with different groups um, and different Fab Labs across the network, both uh, in the United States but also globally. Uh, we're using a uh, Polycom system. MIT sponsors a Polycom bridge for us. It's a free service. We just have to be able to get to the Internet. So all Fab Labs have some kind of a, a communication system, video conferencing system. And the folks that are up here today are, this is the Fab Lab at Lorraine Community College. Uh, in Ohio, and I believe this is a fab lab in the Netherlands, and uh, in uh, uh, at the uh, De Haag Fab Lab, and of course uh, the fab lab that we have on the screen. Uh, this is a, a, an image of the Century College Lab. Uh, you never know who's going to be in a fab lab. Uh, right now, I've got it on mute. I've got it off. But if I wanted to talk to somebody at one of the other fab labs, I'd simply take this off the mute, talk to the lab at tech, Holly at the, one of the other laboratories, and uh, we could begin to to engage in some kind of a dialogue. So this is a this is a pretty valuable tool for our students as they kind of mature through the process. We also utilize uh, lasers in our machine. These are laser engravers or laser cutting machines. We've got two of them because they're such a popular piece of equipment in our lab. We use them for so many different types of things. It, it, it really is a precision um, uh, cutting or machining piece of, uh, piece of gear. We have both the Epilogue Model 45, and uh, about a year ago we acquired an Epilogue Model 120. It's a more powerful laser. It has a larger bed. It enables us to do some, uh, some larger things. Right now there's a, a part that's being uh, cut out in the Fab Lab. I believe it's, uh, one of these students is making some kind of a wheel, probably for one of their robots or one of the machines that they're building. 
Um, and they're, they're, right now they're cutting that out a half inch uh, 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 plastic or half inch uh, polycarbonate. Uh, this is an example of uh, some of the detail or, or some of the uh, designs that you can get out of that lab. Almost anything that, that sh that's, uh, as long as it's non-ferrous material, uh, we can cut in our laser. We can cut up to three quarter inch plywood, a lot of different types of acrylic. We can emboss things, we can etch things, we can engra engrave them, uh, and we can also cut them out. A lot of times what we do on our laser is we'll actually make a prototype out of uh, cardboard or some type of a card stock. The students will design it using a CAD program, like a Corel Draw. Uh, they'll use SolidWorks or they'll use AutoCAD or a variety of different types of uh, computer-aided design tools. Uh, then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll prototype it, we'll model it. Uh, this particular one was cut out on the laser. Uh, once it's uh, been proven, so to speak, then the students can either take an acrylic or some other type of material and they can produce the actual finished part. Maybe what we'll do is we'll come back. I see we're almost done with this uh, cut. Um, if you can kind of zoom in and see what, what some of the details. Now normally this would have taken us uh, a series of steps through a traditional manufacturing process in order to produce this particular part. Once it's finished, the laser goes back to its home location. We simply lift the top out, uh, grab the material, and there's the piece, there's the piece that was just uh, laser cut. So he's cut out some kind of a wheel. It's probably got some kind of a sprocket that we can put a, sh a square shaft in here and drive it or whatever. So uh, again, about half inch stock. Uh, took about three minutes to cut this out. We can get much, much more precise if we need to. Kind of walking around the fab lab, uh, we've got some different parts that we built. This is a, a, a solar boat that was uh, produced in our fab lab through our engineering club. Uh, the entire thing was manufactured in the fab lab. We have another uh, machine down at the other end of our fab lab, what we call our tech shop, which is a, uh, referred to as a shop bot. Essentially, it's a large CNC uh, type machining type of equipment that ours is set up to cut a stock as large as a four foot by eight foot. Uh, typically, we cut plywood, but you can't cut metal with them. So all of the internal frame structures was built. This entire thing was designed. It was prototyped. The students did all the engineering drawing, uh, calculated it for um, uh, uh, flotation, etc and created the, the physical structure, attached the skin to it, and even uh, did some graphics and some uh, designs uh, on another piece of equipment that we have referred to as the uh, vinyl cutter. This is a relatively inexpensive piece of equipment, um, about seven to $800. We use different vinyl stock uh, to make signage. We can also use it, however, if we put uh, copper-based foil in here, we can use this to cut uh, electrical circuits just like we would do the Modella. The difference is uh, you can cut an electrical circuit out here for a few pennies where the substrate of the material to use our Modella mill uh, would be two or three dollars. So depending upon the cost, but uh, that's one of the applications. We also have a series of uh, desktop lathes that we can use in here for turning different types of devices. Uh, we have another kind of a mill that students shoot, use. We teach a class called, called How to Make Almost Anything, which is actually modeled after MIT's successful class that's done in their digital fabrication lab called How to Make Almost Anything. Um, and so we've got a couple different types of mandelas. We have a small uh, lathe that students use to turn a bunch of uh, parts and products. Uh, one of the things that we have in our fab lab, which some fab labs have, not all of them, are various types of, uh, uh, we, we refer to them as prototyping machines. Uh, or FDM uh, uh, machines where we can actually take a design, a three-dimensional design, and we can model it or, or we can create a, an actual prototype, either a scale model or the actual prototype. This was the first one that we purchased. This is a powder-based machine uh, from a local corporation called Z-Corp. uses essentially a cornstarch material. It's a digital. We, we feed a digital file into it, and it essentially prints uh, some kind of an object. The neat thing about this is you can actually print something that's relatively sophisticated. You can actually produce parts that are assembled. It doesn't produce these parts um, um, in, in uh, multiple parts at a time. It'll actually produce the entire part in its assembled state uh, with clearances for movability of parts. The newer one that we received, uh, we just purchased this this summer. This is a Dimension Elite. Uh, this is a, uses a little bit different type of material. Uh, and you can see this one working uh, through the glass right now. We're printing a part, so we insert a plastic uh, carrier in essence. There's a, a material that is actually fed through a heating unit, 
and that uh, printer, in essence, is being driven by the computer software. But when you're finished, uh, for example, it could print out something like this. And again, this is just a display piece, but you could uh, print out something that you could model a house or model some other. And again, this entire thing was printed as one unit. These weren't separate parts that were then assembled. This was printed as one piece. There were clearances uh, so that you had uh, movability, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but this is a fascinating piece of technology, which really enables us to leverage some of the technologies. Here's some other parts that were produced. Here's a, a model house that a student was uh, was uh, engineering, and we uh, before we actually we used to build these out of cardboard, or we we'd illustrate them, and now we can actually take and create a three-dimensional model. If you wanted to, you could pick off the, the roof, and you could look at room sizes and things like that. So pretty uh, pretty neat piece of equipment. So. What you see, uh, what has been presented so far, is very typical of a digital fabrication lab. We refer to them as fab labs. Um, they're all over the world. They're in Norway. They're in uh, uh, Amsterdam. Uh, they're in uh, Minnesota, uh, Century College in White Bear Lake, Minnesota. So we'd encourage you to stop by, uh, take a visit in our fab lab, see if there's some partnership that we can make. Um, if you're a school looking to incorporate a fab lab, we'd welcome you to come over here and sit down and talk with us, see how this can fit within your STEM curriculum. Uh, but this is a place where um, people can have fun. This is a place where people can innovate. This is a place uh, where people can come in and experiment and, um, and let their creativity go wild. So fab labs are essentially tinkers workshop. that are utilizing modern day tools, modern day hardware that's based upon an open source course open source code, and they're really places where you can make almost anything. Uh, thanks, and come visit us.